Hello folks, this is Tom Reeder again, and we're continuing our journey through the book of Acts. If you remember, we're in chapter, we just did chapter two, was the day of Pentecost, when the disciples were empowered with the Holy Spirit. And on that day, Peter did his first sermon, and over 3,000 people repented their sins and believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and was baptized. And now we're continuing on to chapter 3. Now all this is happening. Nobody has seen the, the Holy Spirit move upon people like what's happening right now. And we're going to see there are some things that's going to happen that's going to make us question our spirituality at times. Chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered into the temple, who, seeing Paul and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And Peter, fixing his eyes on him, excuse me, and fixing his eyes on him, with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately, immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and re-entered the temple with them walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. They knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Now as the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us, though by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob... The God of our fathers glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and killed the prince of life whom God raised from the dead, of which we our witnesses, and his, and his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you know, whom you see and know. Yes, faith which comes through him has given him the perfect soundness in his presence of you all. Yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But these things which God foretold by the mouth of all of his prophets, that Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that the times of refreshing, refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord." and that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before, whom 
Heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all of his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said to the fathers, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him shall you hear in all things, whatever he says to you. And it shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the peoples. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and those who follow, follow as many has, have, have spoken, have also foretold these days. You are the sons of the prophet, prophets and of the covenant which God made with our father, saying to Abraham, And in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. To you first, God, having raised up his servant Jesus, sent him to you to bless you, and turning away one, every one of you from your iniquities. Lord, I pray that somehow today that your words will go out and do what it's intended for, to heal physically, spiritually, emotionally, and mentally. As we look into the movement of your Holy Spirit through these men who were fishermen, who failed you, and now have a boldness about them that no one has seen and experienced before. May we see that this is real, and this is what your plan is for all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Peter and John went up to the temple at the hour of prayer, which is be about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Peter and John are only mentioned here at this point. And there was a certain man, this is verse 2, he was lame from his mother's womb. Doesn't say how old this guy is, but he's probably 30s, 40s, something like that. And he was laid daily at the gate of the temple to ask alms from those who entered the temple, begging, because he couldn't work, he couldn't walk, he couldn't do anything. And we're going to see that Peter does something better for him than the begging for alms. He's obviously watching everybody that goes into the temple. We pick this up in verse 3. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. Alms. Excuse me. That's a normal question. And fixing his eyes on him... With John, Peter said, look at us. That's going to get somebody's attention. If Jesus was to say to that to us, look at me. You're going to look. In anticipation of what? Well, we'll see here. So he gave them his attention expecting to receive something from them. That's an understatement. He doesn't, he has no clue what is about to happen. More than his wildest dreams. Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. I bet you that poor guy right then thought, oh boy. What could you have that I possibly want now? I need money. But what I do have, Peter's making a bold statement here. Remember, he's the one that failed Jesus three times. What I do have, what do you have, Peter? I give you 
In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, there's many things. There's salvation. There's power. It's unlimited. In the name of Jesus, what we can ask for, according to his will, of course. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I don't think these guys had time to even think about it, but Peter makes the first move. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately, immediately, not 10 seconds, but immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength. Now you remember, this guy has been paralyzed for 30, 40 years. His muscles, everything has been in one position. And now this guy, in verse 8, so he leaping up stood and walked. I don't think he was expecting that. And I think that he's walking around and rejoicing and he doesn't understand exactly what has happened. And he entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew, apparently beforehand they didn't, it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. In Jesus' name, amazement and wonder has happened, but they don't know about that yet. You can speak Jesus' name and the demons will flee. Verse 11. Now as the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, he's not letting them go because again, it hasn't dawned on him. He's still in shock of what is happening to him. <coughs> All the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. Why not? They know this guy. They've seen him, how paralyzed he was. And they know that this is not normal. How did it happen? They're probably thinking, what's going on here? Boy, if that was to happen in one of our churches or somewhere now, can you imagine what would happen? It's called a miracle. God is full of miracles. The name of Jesus has miracles and power and authority. Now as the lame man who was healed had held on to Peter and John. Okay, I just read that. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us, as though by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? Because they don't know. They've seen so-called magicians do magical things. And then he goes on to explain the history. Verse 13. The God of Abraham, the one that said that their generation of people will be blessed. <coughs> Isaac, his son, and Jacob... 
the God of our fathers, he's given him a ground down on the genealogy here. That this isn't no mistake. This has been prophesied. Most of the people know some of this geology, genealogy. They're taught that. They're Jews. They have to know some of it. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus. Glorified. Took his name, took him, and glorified him because he was the son of God, equal to God, and all the things that he did, and all the things while he was on earth. <coughs> and then he goes on, whom you delivered up, pointing the finger at them, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate. When he was determined to let him go, Pilate didn't want anything wrong with this guy. Pilate knew Jesus had done nothing wrong. He knew it was because of the religious leaders that they were jealous of what Jesus was doing. 14, but you denied the Holy One and the just, and here we go, and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. A murderer. Wouldn't that go against Jewish culture? They believed in stoning people. Well, they were told to stone people by God for their sins. And now they're freeing a murderer? <clears throat> and killed, remind them again, killed the prince of life whom God raised from the dead. Death did not kill Jesus. God raised him up of which we are witnesses. You hear that? John and Peter and the rest of the disciples were witnesses of this event. And his name, through faith in Jesus' name, remember, you got to have faith in Jesus' name, has made this man strong, whom you now, whom you see and know. It's faith. Without faith, our religion is dead. Without faith in Jesus and God, there's nothing. But if we have great faith, then we can see miracles performed. And they are being performed every day. It's just that we don't see them sometimes. We're not in the right place. We're not with the wrong, wrong people. I used to work in the jail system, in the Talbert House. I've heard stories of God saving people's lives from death. I've heard it. I've been around long enough to know and see that God's working, but sometimes we just don't see it if we're not out there in the action. <clears throat> Yet now, brethren... I know that you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers, because you didn't know any better, and that's true. They didn't, but they should have been more open. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all his prophets, that the Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. The Old Testament is full of prophecy concerning Jesus. And the prophets were rejected by the very leaders of the country, of the church. 
they rejected the prophets and the prophecy because it was mostly against them and what they were doing. And they were in sin, and when you're in sin, it blinds you. That Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Well, now he's going to give them a chance. He's told them of the truth about who Jesus is, how this guy was healed. He's gave them a brief history. And he knows that they did it out of ignorance. And now on verse 19, here's what he tells them. Repent, which means turn around, go the other direction. Therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you before you whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration in all things which again, God has spoken by the mouth of all of his holy prophets since the world began. There's still a chance for them to repent, to have the blood of Jesus cleanse them of their sins and their names written down in the book of life. There's a, still a chance for the Jewish nation to come around. And then verse 22. For Moses truly said to the fathers. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him shall you, him you shall hear in all things whatever he says to you. And it shall be that every soul who will not Hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. And it shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among his people. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and those who follow as many to have spoken have also foretold these days. You are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your seed all families of the earth shall be blessed. To you first, God having raised up his servant Jesus Christ, Send him to believe and turning away every one of you from your iniquities. Here it is in a nutshell right here. The church is still beginning. The Jewish nation was supposed to be the one to receive this message. And we're going to find out which the Jewish nation is not especially the hierarchy, the leadership, is not going to accept. But there is a chance for others in here to receive this message. But first, to the Jews, and then. So what is the basic message of this chapter 3? In the name of Jesus, People can be healed. In the name of Jesus, strongholds can be broken. In the name of Jesus, powers to be can be silenced. In the name of Jesus, healing can take place. There's nothing that can't happen through the powerful name of Jesus Christ. If you believe with all your heart and soul. 
God, may these words that I've read and spoken do the work you intended it for. Conviction, prompting, and moving of the Holy Spirit in our lives to make us more like Jesus, to draw closer to you, empty ourselves of everything that's of the world, sensuous things, and things that aren't worth it. People's souls are worth everything. Either heaven or hell, and may it be heaven, and may they not be rejected. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. We'll continue on here in a few minutes.